Welcome to Kalaba Kwaba on Muntu Nabantu Digital Narrowcast. The thoughts, views, opinions expressed by the hosts of this narrowcast are for educational purposes only and may at times become entertaining or nonetheless serious in nature due to the topics we select and cover. We are not exposing, revealing, indicting, or telling you anything other than what's already reported by the big budget mainstream media. We look to shine the light of Baba Mungu by exposing what is done in darkness to light. Enjoy the narrow cast. Welcome, 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 welcome to Klaba Kwaba on Muntu Nabantu Digital Narrowcast. This is Jade Phoenix Rising. Hello, Jade. And this is your brother. Yes, hello. Hello, <laughs> hello, hello, hello. And this is your brother, Silverback Congo. And we are back with another Digital Narrow Cast, and this is episode 007. That's right. <laughs> Welcome, family. Yeah, you know, we, we, we're getting better, right? Getting better and better at this. Oh, yes. And, and you know, it's always a pleasure, too. I love... I love uh, connecting with our, our uh, listeners, and I also love the process, too, because I'm learning a lot as we, we do our narrow cast. It, it's, it's an interesting journey because, you know, as you and I speak, and we speak almost uh, daily about what we would like to present to our listeners, we have ideas of what we would like to share with, to our listeners, but in the process itself, there's so much discovery. And uh, I, I, I'm absolutely excited about today's message because it is something that is very motivational, very inspiring, very positive. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to, to see how this unveils and, and how we inspire our listeners today. Great, great, great. Um, you want to give our, our uh, listeners a little insight on what's happening today, what, what, uh, what we're going to be sharing? Yes, we're going to be talking about renewing mindset, beating, mm -hmm. beating the depression, which is like uh, what the scripture tells us for us to re renew our mind daily, you know, renewing mm -hmm. our mind, becoming more and more spiritual, becoming more and more like Zambe Mpungutulendo. You know, our, our father, a father who is holy in righteousness. So, yes, um, as a people, we, you know, we, we are designed by nature to evolve, right? We, no, nothing goes backwards, right? You're born and then you, you grow, you evolve in mind, uh, you elevate in your consciousness. So... Yes, we're going to be looking at uh, um, the mindset, you know, the mechanics of the mind. And That's we hope, right. Yes, yes. And we hope that it will be uh, of, of value to you, your family, and uh, everyone around you. Right, Jade? Yeah, and there's, yeah, that's right. And there's also uh, someone in particular that we're going to be highlighting today that really is a champion in this area that mm. also is one of the motivations of why we're doing this narrow cast. With yeah. that said, um, would you like to uh, do a transition to, to give a sneak peek on, on uh, who All that right. is? Yes, yes. Let's go ahead and give us a, a visual here, okay? Give us a, let me give you guys a visual. <laughs> All right. 
Welcome to Muntu Nabantu. And the word of the court of the day is Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. If your dreams don't scare you, they aren't big enough. All right? I mean, it's short, but it's, uh, it's pretty impactful if you think about it. Um, what he's saying is you, you have to challenge your mind. You have to challenge, you have to challenge your, your ambition, your desires, right? So, you know, if you set your goals very small, if you make them small, uh, you're not going to grow. You won't, you won't even value them. If you just, you know, if they're easy, if even if everything comes in life to life easy, if your life is easy, there is no way of expanding. There is no growth, right? There can only be growth through through challenges. And in this this very very short uh, uh, quote, it's extremely impactful because you know us as a people, you know, we've been conditioned. And when I say we've been conditioned, because all of our conditioning comes from wherever your environment is. If you are in an environment that requires you to be a people like school, you know, if, if, if most of us, most of our children, we go to school to become servants, right? And the, uh, um, and the powers that be, or should I say the powers that were, Right. They don't condition the kids to be servants. Right. So if you whatever you condition your mind is what is going to produce. If you are in a violent, if you are in a violent, in a violent environment, you're going to become a violent individual. If you are in a, um, um, uh, an environment where there's a lot of stealing. All right. You're going to become a thief. If you are in, envir in, a, in, a, in, in, a, in an environment where there are doctors and scientists, you're going to become a doctor or a scientist, right? That's the expectation. So whatever expectations you set for your mind is what it's going to produce. So your mind is programmable, to say the least. Mm -hmm. All right? That's right. Yes. So that was for a icebreaker, right? Before we get into the mm -hmm. full course, full course meal. That's correct. That's correct. And and I absolutely love the quote and the visual of the poster that's uh, going to be featured. That's actually being featured on Amazon because it is a reminder mm -hmm. about what mindset is and and when you're in your frame of mind in starting the day, you know, be present, be aware of what you're doing, why you do what you do, and what inspires you to do what you do. Because, you know, people say, you know, money is the root of all evil. But if you have plans on what you're going to do with your money and how you use your time, then you understand that what you do is a value. It's not just well, I don't have it, so therefore my life is a wreck. No, you have to be present enough to know that you have to have a plan and 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 um, head in the right direction. Mm. So, um, thank you so much for for sharing that visual of, and that that uh, beautiful poster, and uh, it, it's very striking. I love the 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 graphics on it. Yes, too. yes, family, do yourself a favor. Go get yourself a hard copy support our mission and our program and uh it should be a uh, of a value something for you to put on your wall something that you can take a look at for your kids it's a reminder you know um yeah. we're changing minds here we want to change the mindset the mindset yep, of our exactly. our people and that goes yeah. for us as well yes so, yes definitely so, so, um, thank you so much for that. So, well, yeah, and, and just leaning in towards, uh, what well, we call the full course meal. 
One second, Jay, one second, one second. For some reason, I was getting a lot of feedback. I don't know why. Every time you go within that scene, there's always feedback. But um, hopefully not any longer. But go ahead, Jade. Okay. So in, in terms of leaning towards the topic of the day, uh, I have a scripture that I'm going to share that will help um, guide the the understanding of where we're going with the message. And mm. just as a little disclaimer, before we share anything, just remember... Everything we share is of opinion base. We're not scholars. We're not psychiatrists. We're not therapists. We're not social workers. Yeah. Everything that we, everything we're sharing is all motivational. And for those who may have uh, or require deeper insights, you may want to lean towards um, people uh, who are specialists in that area if you require more assistance when it comes to mindset and or perhaps uh, if you need therapy, you know, there are professionals for those things. This narcast is strictly just for motivational purposes to inspire you because we as individuals need encouragement. And so this message is that of encouragement. Yeah, but we also speak from experience, Jade. We can't, you know, that's that's pretty big. Oh, you know? oh no, not to discredit it, but just to remind people, you know, if 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 they require more than what we're sharing, right. um, to to lean more into to you know guidance if you should require further guidance. I understand. Yeah, not I discrediting understand. who we are and why we do what we do. I understand. I understand. Yes. So, so the scripture I want to share uh, is 1 Corinthians 9, verse 27. Mm. And the scripture, I'm going to read it because I know we don't have a visual on it, but we can uh, include a link um, mm. below. Um, the scripture reads, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Mm. Now, why do you think I'm sharing about running when we had talked about mindset? Mm. Because uh, when, when, oh, yeah. Oh, I thought you were asking me. Go ahead. 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 Silverback. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't want to throw you off. I don't want your message to be thrown off. So you just go ahead, go, go ahead. And, then, um, you know, if, if oh, you, okay. I, I thought, I thought it was a, a question directly towards me, but I guess that's a general one. Eh? Uh. Well, well, I'm sure our listeners will have their own answer, right. but, um, uh, leaning in, um, when you think about it, a, a runner, they have a path, mm -hmm. they have a racetrack. And they actually know where they're going. There's a beginning mm -hmm. and there's an end, right? That's right. That's right. A beginning and an end. They're not just running aimlessly. They're not running in circles. They're not crashing into each other unless they happen to trip. <laughs> mm -hmm. But they are focused. They have a mindset to win. Mm -hmm. They're not just running. Of course, they enjoy what they do because they wouldn't do it if they didn't. Right. But they're physically have prepped and trained for this moment mm -hmm. to win a prize. They're not running aimlessly. Now in our life, we have many goals and sometimes we overextend ourselves in ways where we exhaust ourselves and then we crash and wonder, what am I doing? I am exhausted and I have, I, I've just overextended myself. Mm -hmm. And this scripture is a perfect short little um, visual parable that mm -hmm. reminds us that our mindset is important because when you have a goal, you have to keep your eyes on the prize. Mm -hmm. And so in keeping this scripture in context, everything that I'm going to share with you um, in terms of some reflections of my own experience, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, the experience of others, like we're going to share a little bit about um, Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. The experiences that we have, shared experience, relative experience, and those of professionals will help you to see that that having a mindset and a focus is essential so that you can be successful. That's right. And um, and as you know, my totem is the phoenix. I am a person who has set many goals, but I'm also familiar with setbacks. Okay. Mm. Because the, if you know anything about the phoenix, there is a rebirth and a regeneration. There is a transition that happens and it's part of my growth. It's a part of my self-discovery as a person. And there's a lot of reflection. So my message comes from my experience of what it is to grow, but also with relative experience in terms of what happens when you don't grow, when you're when you're stagnant, when you are struggling and you're facing challenges and you're feeling frustrated. My perspective as as the Phoenix, I'm going to be sharing some some um, advice that I am going to share with you of what I have personally used to help myself propel myself forward when I've experienced some setbacks. Okay. Mm. Right. Well, now, what's the scripture again, Jade? First Corinthians. Um, the scripture, yeah the the scripture that I shared mm-hmm. is First Corinthians mm-hmm. nine verses twenty four. Okay. And it's run to obtain the prize, and you could use the King James or NIV. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love my, I love my NIV. It's very, you know, it's, yes. you know, it's, uh, I'm not a, I'm not an English, I'm not an English speaker. So, you know, uh, I'm not <laughs> the old English. I, I'm not into that. Thou <laughs> shall thou, you know, you know, uh, you know. <laughs> know thy native tongue. <laughs> thy, you know, thy, thy shall, shall, you know. You know yeah. You know. Yeah. The classic. Yeah. Okay, so so here's here's a here's a little um, fun fact. Okay, as you know, I love to dig in for these little things. Um, Six point four billion people mm. use smartphones and technology every day mm. for employment and for entertainment. Mm. Six. Point four, and that's a small figure compared to if you think about how big this planet is. Okay, mm-hmm. not everyone has technology, but the point behind it is, with many people engaged on technology, our mind is actively distracted. Mm. We are very busy, not only physically in our jobs. But our mind is physically active slash distracted. Mm. So my first point about mindset is to be aware if your mind is focused in the present or the past. What are you physically doing right now? Mm. Okay. Of course, you're listening to me speak and you're presently listening Mm -hmm. and you're on a device right yeah but what i mean is when you are using utilizing your time throughout the day how much time are you physically spending online versus being present with your goals in terms of spending time with your family Mm -hmm. spending time on your goals for your future Mm -hmm. if you want to learn a new language you need to carve out time for that. If you want to read a book, you have to carve out time for that because picking up a book versus scrolling through, you know, YouTube three, four hours later, you could have perhaps gone halfway through in your book Mm -hmm. and you're nowhere near that goal. If you're, you know, scrolling aimlessly through videos um, on social media and we lose sight of our 
personal goals, watching other people achieve their own. And that's what I'm using YouTube as an illustration because, you know, people have our create uh, creative people who have um, content, but that's their dreams played out for you, the viewer. Mm -hmm. But what about your personal goal as a person who wants to achieve something, whether it's completing a book or learning a new language or learning how to draw or sew or, or even learning a new software, you have to carve out time for yourself, for your goal, as opposed to passively watching other people achieve their own. And that's what I'm talking about in terms of social media. The mm. entertainment business is good, but your mind is captive and you're basically being sedentary and passively watching others live their own life, living their own goals and dreams, and you haven't started your own. So my first point is, is to be present and to be aware of how you're using your time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the question would, this, oh, yes. go, I'm sorry, go ahead, fi finish. I was, no, 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 continue. No, then I would say then, then the question would be, what is, what is it, what is, what does it mean to be present? What is the state? What mean? Yeah. What, what is the state of, uh, of presence of being present? Like how, how would we define that? How would you be the state of being present? Yeah. Is to, 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 to make note mm -hmm. of your, what you're doing in the moment, mm -hmm. because sometimes when we grab our phone and you like, it could start off as a simple phone call. Mm -hmm. And then your mind is like, oh, you know, that reminds me of something. Mm -hmm. And then you get a, like a little, uh, a little ping. And it's like, this person just posted a new video on Instagram <laughs> yeah. and you click on it. Mm -hmm. And then an hour later, you've watched like 50 videos. Mm -hmm. oh, and boy. maybe you were supposed to start cooking dinner. <laughs> exactly. Maybe you were supposed to uh, assist your child with homework. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you had your own emails to check this keeping in the present, like, hello, your mm -hmm. own emails to read and respond to, oh, or cool. maybe even mail to open up and read, like being in the present mm -hmm. of your business. Or, or, or listening, or listening, or listening to your spouse or giving, you know, yeah, real, yeah, real exactly. attention, you know, real attention to real people in mm -hmm. front of you, real real uh, uh, responsibilities in front of you mm -hmm. because entertainment really is we have so much creative things to to watch and listen to and and this message goes for the teenagers and my child as well it, it's they have homework to do you know mm -hmm. and the entertainment the lure of the phone and the social media is so strong because we have so much variety and so many options Netflix and, and Amazon prime videos and you name it, Hulu, it's all there at our touch. And what happens to your personal goals? You know, did you get to accomplish anything today? So being present in terms of what you need to do for yourself is very important because you know, distractions are very, 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 um, real and, and, uh, and, and, and quite honestly, you don't even realize how distracting you are because you feel good when you're doing it. Yeah, it's called entertain. You're being contained. Entertain, tain, tainment, mm -hmm. right? And it, anytime you hear the word M-E-N-T, it's for mind, right? Entertainment, mm -hmm. you're being conditioned in the mind. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, you bring up a, a valid uh, point because um, mm -hmm. I, um, whenever I talk to people, sometimes, when you, you know, you meet people for just for the first time, like, like you just meet them, the, you know, you meet someone for, hey, you say, hey, how are you? How are you doing? Sometimes I can always tell if a person is forward thinking or backward, right? Mm -hmm. or, That's right. Or they are like, um, so like, they are so 
occupied with their issue or situation, right? Mm -hmm. Where they they are not self reflective, you know, they're mm -hmm. not a, they're not aware of where they are, right? And you, you can always tell, and you know, just based on how a person, and, and this is what they say: uh, first impressions, you know, it means it, it means everything, you know. Mm -hmm. The reason the reason the first impressions mean something is because you have to evaluate yourself, right? And how you're presenting yourself. If you're not self-aware, mm -hmm. it just tells that you're not aware of time, right? You're not aware mm -hmm. of time. You yes. know? Right? So that's very, very important. Um, but you can always tell when someone is stuck in the past, right? When you that's when, right. when you're speaking to them. If they're, if they're only talking about what happened yesterday or in their past, they're stuck, right? Mm -hmm. And you can always say when somebody is, is forward thinking and they're into what they're going to do in the future is they tell you, they present what's going to happen or they're working on something that's going to, you know, like, oh, I got this project going and I'm doing such and such and such. They're forward thinking. So you can always tell, mm -hmm. or you can always tell when somebody's distracted when, say for example, a woman is walking down the street and her kids are all over the place. She's distracted. She's not She's not there with the kids, you know? She's somewhere else. So, you know, or if you are in a relationship where when someone is always talking and, you, and you're quiet and you don't respond to that person, that's, you know, there's no back and forth. So you can always tell when where the person is based on their responses, and how they behave and how they carry themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's, it, it, yeah, it's true. Being present also means to, to not, um, not dwell too much in the past. And that, that definitely, that actually was the next point that I was going to make, oh, wow. you know, um, sometimes in your life, you know, we are going through things or as sometimes we feel like we're things are happening to us, depending on your perspective. And we might encounter some circumstances that that create drama slash trauma. It's it's like a bookmark in your in your book, a page in your life or a decade of your life mm. where you've endured some type of struggle, some mm. type of suffering, and it affected you. And to a certain degree, you feel like, and I'm going to say feel because it affects our feelings. Mm -hmm. You feel like it, that circumstance has now defined you. Mm -hmm. And I have experienced some trauma, mm -hmm. not just some, but a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to shake off things that happen to you because it's not like, oh, you know, um, you, you know, it, you just had a bad day. No, sometimes your bad day could be months. It could be years. And it's hard to forget because it happened to you directly. Mm -hmm. And so when it, when it comes to mindset, if you've experienced um, trauma and it's something that has been hard to shake off, I'm not going to say shake off, not like you can physically shake it off. Mm. There may be things that you still have to deal with, and there are some things that just can't be changed. Like, for example, someone died. That's a fact. They're gone. You cannot bring them back. But there's definitely ways where you can celebrate the life and live with love and loving them, even though you physically can't touch them. Mm -hmm. So... There's a, a way to transition past the drama if you learn how to live with the pain as opposed to making it feel like it has cut off, you know, circulation in your 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 heart. Like you feel like, oh, man, they died and I died with them when you're physically alive. Mm. Like you have not died. You physically are here. But how you deal with your feelings will help you in terms of moving past that pain. Mm -hmm. And it, it does take time. You know, like I, I, when I lost my mother, it took my mourning was seven years. Mm -hmm. But when I lost my father, it took me about three because I've already endured 
I knew what it was like to lose someone close to me. Of course, it doesn't, you know, one was not more favored than the other, but I learned to grieve better. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm learning to move past my pain and not let it, the losses, stop me from being myself because I'm the, the survivor and, and I still have responsibilities. I still have to live and take care of myself. So allowing yourself to move past your pain is very important when you have experienced trauma. Because if you don't um, acknowledge the pain and, and, and also acknowledge that you need to move forward, you will constantly look at it like, oh, I can't talk about it. It's too painful. Therefore, you're not moving past it because you've decided to shut down. You have to say, you know what? I've been through a lot, but I'm so grateful to be here right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that I'm learning to deal with my feelings about it as I move forward. So you have to remember that your past does not have to cripple you from your, your progress of what your future self is going to be. If anything, it might inspire you all the more, depending on how you look at it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and I'm going to use uh, Tyler Perry as an example. Mm. If you ever research him in his childhood, he had a childhood trauma. He had a circumstance where, and and this has happened, unfortunately, to a lot of young boys, Mm. where he was molested. Mm -hmm. And he himself, oh, in his trauma as a child, found solace and comfort in writing stories and creating stories and characters. And through writing, I think this happened to Maya Angelou as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. They both, they both equally found comfort in writing. And through writing and writing characters and writing short stories, developed a skill so that now what they do has become their future. They became writers, authors, directors, and and he, staying true to his past, created characters that were a part of his past. And now he gets to write the book. Mm-hmm. He gets to write the story, as opposed to feeling like whoever did this to him is destroying his future. No, he got in the driver's seat and he is writing his own narrative. And he is the director of his future. He's not letting that circumstance create this, you will never be a man because I stole your manhood. Mm. No, he is a man. Not only is he a man, he's a writer, he's a director, he's a producer, he is a father to a son. Mm. And so his future, he he did not let it stop him from being the man he needed and wanted to be. And he's a better man for it. And also, too, through his writing, can um, inspire others to go after their dreams. And that's what Maya Angelou did. And so, you know, just sharing with it the mindset, where do you want to be? You are in the driver's seat. Yes, you have you've had a, a, a couple of scars, like when you fall and you get cut and you look at the physical scar. You remember your pain. You remember you needed stitches. You remember you're, you're physically show the sign of, of injury. Whereas others have internal scars where you no one really sees it unless you start talking about it. But again, don't let it stop you from being the person you want to be. And you are in the driver's seat. You decide to push past the past and and push past the pain. But you, of course, acknowledge the pain. And in Tyler Perry's example, he used his pain. Maya used her pain to push past it and almost even mocking the person who did it to them. Mm. And, and you know, that's the victory that they have and the inspiration that we can draw from that. Yeah, that's amazing, Jay. That's amazing. You know, very, very true. I mean, we, um, like you said, we, we, we are 
you um you dedicating this uh narrowcast to Muhammad Ali, right? Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, and, and you... so yeah, yeah. So let's let's take a look at and see how Muhammad um mm-hmm. uh ins- has a way of, of sharing about mindset. Right. Now, now uh, I, I know you want to get there. Can I? I've also got a scripture too. Actually, I think uh, it goes, it goes in line with what you are talking about, but a little bit more in. Uh, um, uh, it kind of in, encapsulates what we're talking about, right? So, okay. Um, Ecclesiastics uh, chapter three. Uh, it says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, right? A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to re- to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. All right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, I guess this is what this is saying is that we, we have to be aware of our seasons, you know, what season you're in. Again, it goes into it goes into being self-reflective. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, be, being mindful of. OK, yes. Because when you when you when you're mindful, it's like you can um, you can Im- you can kind of engage, uh, gauge what's coming, right? You can, you can um, brace, right? You can brace, brace yourself. <laughs> you know, brace mm-hmm. yourself. You know, it's like you, you know, when you you about to go outside and you know it's snowing. You know, it's it's a storm outside. You're saying to yourself, "Hmm, I don't really want to go," but you're bracing yourself. You're preparing yourself for the outcome. Right. So that's life. Life is there are going to be times where it's not going to be pleasant. You know, mm-hmm. things are not going to be pleasant there. Are, um, but the challenge is how do you overcome those times, those experiences? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That's, it's, that's just life. There's going to, you know, it, it's this scripture is pretty much saying that it's inevitable. It's it's it's. Life is that life is that there is going to be challenges ahead. Not 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 uh, not because you want to avoid them, because they're going to be there. I mean, I mean, it's like there is no way of avoiding these challenges. Basically, right? That's life, because through through these experiences, we have to expand as people, right? You have to have contrast. You have to understand contrast in life, right? One moment mm-hmm. you, you can be in love, and next minute you can be hateful, right? But you you have to be able to understand and be able to go through these experiences. That is life. Mm-hmm. It's so true, so true, and and also understand that 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 um like like you said, there are cycles to things. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we we feel like, oh, I have bad luck, or maybe those who um, feel superstitious, they might say, oh, I must be under a generational curse, or <laughs> or others will say, um, you know, I just never really, you know, like going back to the, the bad luck thing, I just never seem to get what these people get. Like, I just seem to, this, everything just seems to go wrong for me. Mm-hmm. But if we look at things in terms of a cycle, there, you know, the, 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 the sun rises and sets. We, the clouds, they don't even stay posi- in position. Mm-hmm. Everything is constantly moving, mm-hmm. even time. And that's why it's important for us to remember time. Mm-hmm. Everything is not going to be the same every day. And 
if you've ever seen the movie Groundhog Day, mm. emotionally we feel like, uh, new, you know, same day, same drama. You mm-hmm. go to work, this is going to happen, <laughs> boom, this is what's going to happen, boom. Mm-hmm. But the, in actuality, no, you you don't ride the same car you, at the same 701. You don't see exactly all the same people in the same a bus or car or even the same cab driver. Mm-hmm. You, it, It's a different... It's a different circumstance at different moments of time. And your decisions can affect your future. You know, yes. and here's here, here's a reality. And I'm, I'm not going to, I promise you, I'm not going to digress. Mm. But if you've ever researched the people who did not enter the Twin Towers mm. the day of the catastrophe, their life has changed because of a split decision. Some people, their alarms um, didn't ring. Some people missed the bus, missed the cab, missed the train. Other people answered a call. Some people went for a smoke. These are the people who did not go in the building when it came down. Mm-hmm. Our split decisions do affect our future. So you might feel like you're having a bad day, but understand this. There is some room and element elements for change that directs and changes the course of your life. Okay. And this is why it's important. If you feel like you're in a situation where it's a conundrum, this mm. is my point, the conundrum where things keep happening to you. 9-11 is not happening every single day, but I'm using the point of, of how it feels like a catastrophe is about to happen because my life you know, we can over dramatize things and then there are real life events like that. Mm-hmm. That event is not happening every day in New York. But emotionally, we feel like, oh, things keep happening to me. But understand this there is room for change, even though the circumstances around you feel catastrophic. Mm-hmm. And so, what I'm saying is, is when you find yourself in a situation where it feels like a conundrum. Mm-hmm. In our mind, we feel like it's monumental, that you can't overcome it. Mm-hmm. And that's why I make the, the, the correlation to the towers coming down. Like everything is crashing in on me. I can't, come, I can't overcome this. This is just too big. Yeah. Remember, those little elements of change change the courses of those people's lives. So if you find yourself in a conundrum, this is where there's room for prayer. Mm-hmm. This is where there's room for seeking advice. Mm-hmm. Learn from others who have been in your situation. Research. And you might not be the type that wants a therapist, mm-hmm. but maybe you're the type that will pick up a book, a self-help book. Or maybe you're the type of person who wants to confide in, confide in a friend who, who has sought advice. And see, you know, test the waters. How did this work for you? And did that work for you? Or maybe you can go to a a, a, um, a group session where they have, like, you know, a, a talk. Like maybe sometimes they have people who write books and they, they do a lecture. And you can attend a lecture or a workshop where you can be in the company, like, for example, AA. You can be in the company of others who've experienced things like you. And this is forward thinking. This is progress where you've decided to say, you know what, instead of having defeated thoughts, which is my third point, instead of uh, allowing yourself to feel like you're defeated mm-hmm. or overwhelmed or, or, or stuck, the progress comes when you make a conscious decision to push past the pain but directing yourself with guidance. So mm-hmm. you could seek help with, with books, you could pray, you could get a therapist, you can confide in a friend, you could be in a, a bigger social circle, or if you're private, like I said, you know, in, I, I wouldn't advise being alone, but of course, sometimes you need time for reflection. But again, if you are the type that have the de- defeatist thoughts where you're just negative, you do need another perspective to say, hey, I believe in you, or it's okay, I've been there too. 
So you can relate to someone who can say, I used to be there, but this is where I'm at now. And, and that will help pull you out of the pit of depression because mm. you see that someone else is an overcomer or is overcoming and willing to to share some insight with you. Well, let let let, let me give you a, um, um, an illustration, if I may. Sure. Uh, now, um, when a person spends a lot of time, like you you mentioned earlier, you know, if you are watching a lot of videos, if you're doing all these things that distracts you, right? And then, so at what at what point? Because because this there seems to be um, uh, there's two sides to depression. I would say there's those who say depression is when they feel like they are contained, right? That they can't move forward, right? It, it, would that be the, an accurate assessment? Some people who feel like they yeah, there's some people who feel like they can't move forward. Yeah, like and I think and I think the other option is is when they have exhausted themselves mm-hmm. and don't know how to move forward. Right. Like I think if you've exhausted all your options, like I don't know, because some people think it's luck, like this happened to me and I don't see how things are going to get better. And then there's the other reality of what are you doing to get help, or what are you doing to to move past that. Right. Because if you've exhausted your own options, then maybe it's time to, you know, move forward with assistance. Right. So would you say that depression is a state where you feel refrained, like you feel contained? I, I mean, you could feel it. Mm. It could be feeling and other people, it might be physical. Like, I mean, if you, mm. for example, if you have cancer or if you have if you've been a car accident and you have spinal injury, there are certain things you can't just, you're, you're depressed because your life is, is physically changed, you know? Mm, mm. So there are things that are, that are not just mental. Like you, you might have a physical ailment that's long, that creates long suffering, mm. you know, like if you, for example, if you're a diabetic, you have to take your medicine, but you hate it. Or mm. if you, um, you know, have uh, some type of, you know, illness that, that it, it just annoys you. Like, you know, like some people don't think um, asthma is, is, is a bad thing, but mm. it is a seasonal misery, a living hell, because mm. other people could just sneeze and, and, and get on with their day. Whereas mm. asthmatics, it's like being a fish out of water mm. for months. Mm. And then that pump, you know, relying on, on, on an instrument to breathe, whereas other people could just cough, clear their throat and their, be about their business. And others are like gasping and, and, and could pass out if they don't have their inhaler with them. So, so there, but th- again, that doesn't, that doesn't lead into depression, but there are some illnesses are, are that create a situation where you feel like your quality of life is poor. And you wish that you were different. Mm. Now, there are things you can't physically change about yourself if you have a chronic illness or perhaps if you've been diagnosed with, you know, depression with like bipolar or schizophrenia. That is the extreme case of you can't really 100 percent shake all of that. But definitely there are coping mechanisms to help you navigate in your daily tasks. And that's why sometimes you need assistance to help um, define um, goals that are attainable for you. Because it's not everybody that will need that kind of help, but you can seek help outside of yourself so that you can cope with things. Yeah, because depression is a very, very hard um, uh, illness to to define, to even uh, mm-hmm. understand, because I've had, I've had, I have had people, I've had friends who were uh, depressed. I've had a friend who committed suicide um, because there was a, 
it, it runs, it ran in the family, you know, it, 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 this, I guess there's levels to this, you know, so to this, um, mm -hmm. this order or illness, if you, you know, if you may, if I may, you know, it's, it's, is it an illness or is it uh, a disorder? Do you? Like, I'm just like, I, I'm asking this question now because it's, it just dawned on me. Like, wait a minute, this, oh, is, uh -huh. is, you know, is it, a, is it an illness or a disorder? Because they, like they say, there's levels to depression, right? There are those who kind of like, you know, you can be, dep I guess depression is when you're, you, when you feel contained, right? Is it, is that the case? I mean, you can feel contained, but mm -hmm. there are things that they're, 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 like you said, there's different levels. There are things that physically are happening around you. And then there's things that are physically happening within you. And that's why it's important, especially if you're the person who finds yourself. And when we say conundrum, for those who don't know what that means, mm. is when you find yourself hitting the walls, it's like you're constantly, um, you know, like going in a, if there's go, a pattern of going in a going circle around the circle. Yeah. Yeah, in, you, yeah. You're, you're, you're in a series of, of breakups or in a series of job losses, you're in a series of, of, of arguments and fights with family. And it's, it, it, it's, there's some conflict there within you or, and or around you and you need some direction. You know, it, it's hard to navigate a career when you are struggling with yourself because you have to have enough confidence and focus to give to your job. But imagine raising a family and never dealing with your past. And so that's why if you can get, um, you can work on what you need to work on um, and, and be okay with guidance, then you can have a better insight because sometimes we just, we just don't deal with it. It's like, oh, there's nothing, you know, I'm okay, I'm all right. But then you, you keep doing the same thing over and over again. Like people who are, who uh, gamble. It's like, mm. no, you know, it's, like, it's an addiction and it's a mindset. And it's an impulse. It's a habit that affects you and your entire household. You know, mm. and sometimes, you know, it, it, it will cause depression because when you've lost a lot of money, you know, it's like you could have done something different if you looked at and treated your money and time differently, you know. So, so the question. And, and so, so, yeah. So what, 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 would, what would cause depression? Depression would be, uh, 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 so is life experiences that cause people to feel depressed, right? It's not, it's, if, if it's psychological, then it would be out of the ordinary. It'd be like, you know, it just came upon you and you kind of like became depressed, right? But no, if, I mean, it could be both. It could be mm -hmm. both because sometimes things do happen to us, like using Tyler Perry as an example. I mean, mm -hmm. he's a child, you know, it happened to him. Oh, he didn't oh. become depressed. Mm -hmm. but, but if it's something that you do and you own it, Mm -hmm. You know, like gambling is a choice. Nobody came and took the money out of your wallet. Like mm -hmm. it's a choice. You've devastated your future if you've gambled your life savings. You know, the reason, that would, I, you know? the reason I'm asking is because you're not going to hear this term depression on the continent. Like, uh, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. this depression is like, you know, there. I mean, if there are levels of depression that our people are extremely depressed, especially our brothers and sisters here in Americas. You know what I yeah. mean? Is that because, <laughs> you, you know, we find ways to o overcome depression. And I think, I think we deal with depression very different from how other people would deal with, de with depression, right? Uh, well, I can't speak for everybody. Mm. All I know is is um, that, you know, just going back to the conundrum, if there's a pattern, then it's important to get a different perspective on how to deal with it. Mm. Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm just using the simple example of, of gambling. There are certain things that can be done to avoid 
long suffering, like smoking, you know, it, you know, whenever someone smokes and they start from age 12 mm. and now I'll fast forward to, to being 50, 60 years old. And mm -hmm. then you get a diagnosis of, oh, we see something in your lung, a spotting in the lung. Mm. I'm not surprised. Wow, the body, and you're right, now, you're right, you're right, Jade, you're right. <laughs> the body also, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, it's going to it's gonna reveal what you've done over mm. time. And so, you know, that, that rebellious teen back then that didn't want to listen to anybody, mm -hmm. that decided to take on a habit that affected the future, mm. now the quality of life is shortened. Your health yeah. is, your, is not strong. You can't do the things you used to do, like maybe you were running or riding a bike. Yeah. You've done something to yourself. So some things happen to you. Mm -hmm. And then there's others that you could have, things that you could have avoided if you would have listened. Yeah, your, you know, your organs. And gambling is a choice. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're right, Jade. Your organs do go to a uh, stress. So stress and mm -hmm. depression is well, the same, is it? Because your, your, your well, body. Well, you, mm -hmm. go ahead, Jade. <laughs> well, well, again, we're not we're not therapists, but uh, if you do something, if you do something to cause harm to yourself, mm -hmm. and then you regret it, some things are just not reversible. That's mm -hmm. that's the point I'm trying to make. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that you do that affect your future mm -hmm. because you've made poor choices. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily a state of a mental state of perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, my life sucks because we got to own some of the choices that we've made, you know? Yeah, but you know, it, 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 the, the truth is, Jade, it, it has to start from, the, it has to start in the mind first before it actually become an, an action or even affects your body, right? Cause, because if you think about it, if you consistently are around people who are, are, are thieves, all right, or liars. True. Just true. You, you're gonna, your mind is going to be conditioned to be, all of a sudden become a liar as well. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, so it's like, yeah, it's you're putting yourself in a stressful environment. Right. And and uh, um, it is one 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 either two ways of reacting, two ways of response. Either you become uh, strong in mind as far as understanding, you know, this current situation you're in. Right, like, um, like, a str like, if you're a cup and you consistently going, you know, you always you in you you work in an environment where there's always violence that's taking that's taking place. It's gonna do something to you, right? It's either gonna make you become uh, empathetic, or you're gonna become violent yourself, right? Yeah, but it's definitely there's definitely circumstances where it can condition you because mm. it's made an impression. You know, if you know, like, look at the young boys that that join gangs. They, they, it's an environment for them. They're they're in a situation where, in their mind, they think, well, we're protecting each other. So their perspective of is brotherhood and protection and mm. loyalty. But from the outside, it's violence, it's drugs, it's self destruction. Mm. And so we we perceive it differently. But the in the environment that they're in definitely is a high risk one mm -hmm. because it it it's they're they're engaging in activity that could steal their life at a young age. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. whether they're doing the drugs themselves or um, violence within the gangs or rivalry mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. just even getting arrested for the crime itself. Mm -hmm. They're putting themselves at a high risk of 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 uh, mortality. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, the environment does affect us, but I think having, being able to navigate through the conditions that, that is in your surrounding, that mindset to overcome that, that, that situation is having a different perspective because, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a spiritual person, you know, I can't justify um murdering somebody because mm. i'm angry you know that's like okay yeah you might live in a violent neighborhood but that doesn't mean i'm going to pick up a knife and kill someone when i lose my temper mm. so i think I, I have been exposed to 
um, learning about God at a young age. So that environment helped me to think and navigate differently with when it comes to being upset. You know, so we can um, make a decision even though our environment is not the best mm. and conducive to to our uh, is is not the 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 most positive because there still are choices even within your negative circumstance. Mm. As long as you're determined to overcome them and not succumb to it, like oh, because they're liars, I'm going to be a liar and and a cheat. I, you don't have to follow mm. in their footsteps. You mm. don't like, for example, sons who've seen a father's beat their mother. You mm. don't have to be like your dad if he's like that. You mm. can decide to be a better father and learn how to respect a woman as opposed to being the aggressor, you know, and feeling good about making people succumb to your will. It's like, what is that? You know, is that narcissism? Is it, is it like, again, that whatever that father went through as a child mm-hmm. playing out in the worst way with his own family. It's like mm-hmm. he's perpetuating the evil that he may have experienced. But then what about the son? Mm-hmm. So you don't have to be and follow in the footsteps of others that are self-destructive. Mm-hmm. So having that 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 pivot and change in your future, it it it's a decision. You can decide to be different. You do once you make up your mind, you can change the way you 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 live your life despite the circumstances that you have been raised in or uh, 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 or experienced. Like Tyler Perry, mm-hmm. he didn't have to become um, gay. Because someone made him feel like, you know, or perhaps was, Mm -hmm. that raped him. He doesn't have to become gay just because his innocence was taken at a young age. He maintained his masculinity, even Mm -hmm. though it was a struggle emotionally, the pain, Mm -hmm. the real pain. He maintained what he wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean... um... It's funny you said that um, he doesn't have to be gay. It's funny, if you speak to a lot of, I personally have spoken to um, men who are um, homosexuals, and they would say that if, um, uh, they would say that what I found, you know, and, and it, this was an assessment I made, not necessarily, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not factual, right? But the assessment that I've made was, after speaking to a uh, gay man and even f- uh, lesbians, I found that at some point in their life, they were molested. Okay. Mm-hmm. At some point in their life, they were molested. So if you, the, the, um, what's constant in these accounts, when I, whenever I speak to someone who's homosexual and I, and I ask them, so, you know, was there something, they don't usually always say that they don't always bring that up that uh, they were, they were molested or, you know, they were, you know, you know what I mean? They don't, they don't bring mm-hmm. it up. But if you keep asking them questions, if you keep asking, keep asking, then you're going to eventually find that a lot of um, these people were molested when they were mm-hmm. young. They were betrayed. The hidden truth. Yeah. Yeah. The hidden truth behind it. Yeah. And, and what, what I find to be most unfortunate is that, that that unspoken truth mm-hmm. is being masked mm-hmm. into like a holiday. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's good. It's one thing to feel like you've overcome because you've accepted. Like if you've decided to to go that path, you've mm-hmm. accepted it. Like this is who I am, and I'm proud. Mm-hmm. But it's that other part, that painful part of you, that was at the root of what pivoted your life in that direction. That perhaps was never dealt with that that is that broken side of you that that needed healing like that that child that that wasn't protected or left in the in the wrong company Mm -hmm. there is this healing that perhaps never happened Mm -hmm. but you found solace in others that have gone through the same thing but all of you may have 
had this trauma and just never dealt with it, but feel comfortable in numbers. It's like we came out and we are, Mm -hmm. but you also are um, broken in some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important to understand that you know, we, we it, 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 and I, I say this not not in a discouraging way, but somehow, in 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 the um, the 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 liberation and the celebration of the choices, mm-hmm. there is this glorification that kind of kind of like puts like sugar coating the pain. Mm-hmm. There's a sugar coating of a pain. There's a mask. There's a mask there. Mm-hmm. And and so even though you find solace in numbers, there's a lot of individual healing that still needs to happen. Mm-hmm. And I know it, it. family members who know their family members well know this, too, but they mm-hmm. may not be equipped enough to 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 uh, be the one to help you mm-hmm. because they perhaps maybe were the ones that weren't around when it happened to you. Yeah, they were participants. And, and then when it, yes, yeah, they either participated or mm. were ignorant of your needs or maybe didn't believe you mm. or maybe it was too painful for you to convey to them because of their thoughts and feelings about about the topic itself, mm. you know. So so uh, I'm sorry if that's your circumstance, but there is hope in mm-hmm. terms of growing past the pain and if there is deep seated pain there, definitely encourage you to to not let it define you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that and that that there is healing that that can be had mm-hmm. and uh, you don't have to mask over it. You definitely can deal with with it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if you've been assaulted, this is uh, you shouldn't feel ashamed. You should. Um, but it's, a, it's a shameful act. You know, those acts. Mm-hmm. I, know, I know we kind of like ventured off from depression, but it's a part of it, right? Like mm-hmm. when yeah. you, uh, when, um, when you, when you lose agency of self, right? It's like, it, mm-hmm. it's, I guess you would, be, you would feel depressed. Yeah. You have to become depressed, right? So it requires, yeah. it requires uh, people who are, who are, who have, uh, the education and the experience and the know-how to allow you to help you overcome this um, life events that are yeah trauma a trauma yeah traumatic yeah yeah uh, I I had a friend who who um was molested when when he was a child mm. and he was a lovely boy mm. and notice I said was. Mm was a lovely boy, extremely intelligent, straight A student, mm. but he was so broken that mm. he could barely eat. Mm. So so he, at a very young age, suffered from de- de- depression and anorexia. Mm. And so whenever we went to lunch, we had to encourage him to feed himself. Mm-hmm. So at a very young age, we saw signs of of um beyond depression mm-hmm. it it whenever he smiled or we helped him to smile, it was a major victory mm. whenever we told him a joke, it gave him some joy before he went home mm-hmm. but unfortunately, my friend never lived to the age of 18. Mm. He committed suicide. Mm. And, um, you know, his suicide was, was beyond, it wasn't just, it wasn't just because um, he was just molested. Mm. It was also because because he was teased. Where, when it's boys, if there's a hint of femininity, yeah, uh, there's Jay. this teasing. There's a teasing that happens, mm-hmm. and um, he was teased so much that he didn't find comfort at home or school. Mm-hmm. And at at a very young age, he he just didn't have the the support to cope 
Mm. And that's why it's very important, you know, when when someone has a trauma that's that deep, that they find, um, they find they have like a positive outlet to help them cope with the feelings, so that mm. they don't take their life, because others around you may not have, they may not be kind, they may mm. not be supportive, they may not be loving. They may not even understand what you're thinking and feeling. You know, just shoving a, a plate of food in front of a, a, an anorexic is not going to inspire them to take care of their bodies. Mm-hmm. You know, because they 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 fear being fat. They so it's like the more you put in front of them, the more they're going to be like, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and um, but but having the will to live and be healthy is mm-hmm. different. So mm. that that mindset, his mindset needed some healing. His heart was broken, but his mm. mind also needed some 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 healing. And that's mm. why I always, you know, stress that the that sometimes your environment is not the best. Mm. But if you seek um, counsel and advice and solace, mm. you know, you can get um, some some help to to push forward, to push past the trauma. Mm-hmm. That's very true, Jay. That's very, very true. Very, very, very true. But we do also have, um, as um, as Af- Africans, um, when it comes to these events, I, I know that um, the sins of the fathers revisits the the children the, all the way to the fourth generation. Uh, you don't find too much of these types of um, what do you call these types of um, quote unquote depression? This is this is mainly in the in the West, you know, mainly in the West. And this um, depression is also a spirit, Jade, right? Because everything mm-hmm. takes on a spirit. Yes. It's, it's a spirit mm-hmm. that, com- right. that comes that comes over an individual, and um, if you're unaware. If you are unaware of this spirit, you will be, you'll be taken. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you an example for example, when in the Bible, when he saw, when people, when, um, when people, when the people came to him, right. When people came to him for, for help, sometimes they came because they were sick. Right. When they came to him, right. I wonder what I wonder what is that? Um, it's like uh, I don't know if it's a. It sounds like a, something is sliding on the floor or something. But anyway, uh, when they came to him, they would come to him and they were sick. Or like a woman, like woman came, she was bleeding. She was bleeding for years, right? Or somebody came, they were mm-hmm. sick, and then he would just touch them and he would, he would heal them, and then he would say, "Okay, uh, go in peace, sin no, sin no more." Mm-hmm. Right, so, so understand these conditions are are a cause, and uh, you know we we are we are when we were not designed to be sick. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. We weren't designed to be sick. All right, it's a it's a it's not a it's 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 just not it's not something that there was it, it it's a it's an imbalance. It's a spirit. Okay, when when these things happen, from a spiritual perspective, it's not, you know, when you're not at peace, mm-hmm. right? When you're not at peace internally, you know. Yeah, it's, and it's, and also too, like, and, and just making the correlation with with um, spirit, um, lust, you know, and greed. Mm-hmm. It is a spirit. It's, it's a temptation. Mm-hmm. It's a temptation. And then, because you act on it, mm-hmm. then it 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 manifests itself into mm-hmm. to drama in your life. Mm-hmm. Like yes. when you're tempted to steal, that that spirit of temptation. Mm-hmm. Then you act on it. Then the reality of oh, mm-hmm. the arrest. Mm-hmm. You got caught, mm-hmm. but it was the spirit of greed. It was the spirit of lust. Mm-hmm. And came, then came over you, you 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 succumb to it, and then now. You know, doing time, it's like you, 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 there's a consequence. 
mm-hmm. you know, and but um, but in terms of depression, yeah, we we don't think of it um, until you understand that it 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 it, it uh, alters your mental state, mm-hmm. where you no longer see the options. You may not see the hope. You don't have the willingness to live or to thrive. Or to be a better, it's like you give up, and, and this is the people who go a wall, mm-hmm. you know, and and they 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 got fired from a job, and now they want to take it out on everyone who still worked there, you know. They say going postal, that old phrase of going postal, mm-hmm. and it's like, well, what did you do to cause yourself to lose a job? Mm-hmm. You know, like did you ever own that instead of blaming others, and now you want to kill everybody? Because I, I, guys, I'm not, I'm not making a joke about this at all, mm-hmm. but that's an extreme version of, of, of altered mental state where someone succumbs to it and then loses their, they're not in their right mind when you want to kill someone because you got fired, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it's, it, there are events that lead up to that, that decision, you know, of course you can have, turnovers and things like that that do happen but Mm -hmm. if it's something that you did that caused you to lose your job then having some level of maturity would understand that um yeah maybe they they contributed to that that job loss Mm -hmm. and and going postal that term is it is a is a mental breakdown there is a mental breakdown. And so it's very important for us to be mindful of what you're thinking and what you're doing and how you react to the, the situations that you're in. Just because A happened to you, B doesn't have to happen. You can rise above it. And I'm going to keep using um, Tyler Perry as an example. It's like you can either let the circumstance break you down which also is your mental state where you feel worthless, where you feel like inadequate, you feel socially inept, or you can say that person is of a depraved mind or, or a mindset. They need help. This hurt me, but I will not let it break me. I will not let it define me. I am going to be somebody. And that's why I'm going to I'm going to stop with my lectures <laughs> and we're going to transition um to a man who had a great mindset mm-hmm. and that is Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. And this will be a good segue to to leave the 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 these points and just look at his mindset to show what it is to be an overcomer mm-hmm. despite um, challenges, and we're going to talk about his challenges and and his victories. Mm-hmm. So, would you like to lean into that? Yeah, I mean, Muhammad Ali is good is a good example, you know. Uh, Muhammad mm-hmm. Ali, if you look at his uh, if you look at his life, uh, obviously we're looking not necessarily his you know his personal life. But we're looking at his mind from this perspective of sports, all right? Um, I don't know what's moving back there, Jace. It's like something is moving. Um, oh. Yeah. Okay. So so basically what I'm saying is this. Um, and um, he... We, we can look the two ways, two ways we can look at Muhammad Ali. We can look at him as a man who had his... You know, he had these issues. He had, you know, personal issues that, that we can go into. But I don't want to go into that, you know, you know, that avenue. I would rather want to look at his mindset when he came to the sport that he loved, and which is boxing, right? Um, he happens to be the, the only um, champion, the only uh, champion who every person that he lost to, he came back and, and defeated them, Right. And um, you can say that, you know, Muhammad Ali wasn't the most, um, uh, he, he, he didn't have like a knock, the knockout punch. Though he did have a powerful punch, but it wasn't that, that powerful, right? What he had was, he was very skillful, very skillful and very fast for his size. But, the most, but his best attribute 
as an athlete was his mind, his mindset. Right? Whenever, uh, whenever uh, a fighting, um, whenever they had a, a tour or the tournament, when they had a, um, a, a scheduled fight, a box. A, yeah, you know, uh, go ahead, say it. A, a box, boxing match. A mm -hmm. boxing match. Yeah. Right. Right. He would. He would study his opponent. His opponent. <clears throat> Excuse me. He would study his opponent. And he would defeat his opponent even before they got into the ring. Mm -hmm. Right. So he. So he had a skill. He had a knack for, knowing the person, really getting into the person's mind get into their, this, this, their psych psychology, right? And to disrupt them, to disarm them before they even got into the ring. So by the time they mm -hmm. got into the ring, even his method, the way he went into the ring was, was, it was, they still, their fighters are still studying his ways, his tactics, even till today, right? You've got people like Floyd Mayweather, who are just you know, obnoxious, you know, who, who talk, yes. who, who boast, right? But he does that because he is getting into the mind of the of the other fighter. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is when he got in, when he get when he got into the ring with you, he took you. He he he, he fought like the way crocodiles uh, hunt. Okay, a crocodile the way they would hunt you is they would allow you to, you know, if you go into the water, if you go into the, the, the river or the, the ocean, the river, right? The river. When you go in there, they would allow you to keep, keep coming. So the, basically they'll draw you in away from the, the, the bank, right? So they will draw you deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper into deeper water, where they know mm -hmm. that you don't have any control any longer, so they can then attack you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the way Muhammad Ali fought his opponent, he went the distance. Now keep in mind, today they have up to 12, 12 rounds. Back in the day, they used to have up to sixteen rounds. Wow. Okay. All right. So these people used to fight long bouts. So mm. what you have is, you know, he would he wouldn't necessarily fight you aggressive. To like maybe the 12th, 13th round, when you have expended a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. All right. So that takes calculation. And he also, he took a lot of hits. And, this, and, and that's what happened to him. You know, he got that multiple, what do you call it? Multiple sclerosis, right? Was it? Mm -hmm. Some, yeah, you know. So that's what happened. It's like, this is a person who psychologically knew that when you when you was gonna go and fight him, you knew it's gonna be the distance, mm -hmm. right? And you you know what I I, I also learned too about him, mm -hmm. and 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 it's is the fact that at the time when he was fighting, he himself physically wasn't the stereotypical boxer's size. They of said course. physically they they you know they they had like a rule book of what. The, you know, like how you, when you, um, like when you're in the military, they want people to be of a certain weight. Mm -hmm. You have to be a certain weight because if you're obese, you know, they, they can't, if you're like, for example, the army, you, mm -hmm. you can't, you can't enlist if you're not the right weight. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So they have to discriminate because you, you're just not going to make it. You have to trim down before you be sent out to war. They had a handbook of, of, physical stature of what um, lightweight is versus heavyweight mm -hmm. and his physical stature wasn't wasn't the typical lightweight or middleweight mm -hmm. and they said even down to his hands it's like everything they said everything about him just was off it wasn't like your typical boxer but somehow he was able to make it into his category even though he didn't have the typical weight and and size and stature of other men in his 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 um category mm -hmm. but despite his physical stature he was able to defeat um his opponents not using utilizing physical strength but 
with his mind. Mm -hmm. Of course. So he, it, it wasn't necessarily the full force and impact of his fist on contact. It was how, kind of like what we learned about, if anyone's ever studied Bruce Lee, how Bruce Lee would have this mental focus of how he was going to take down his opponent to the T. Mm -hmm. He studied, he studies his opponent. So that when he gets into the ring, he knows exactly what his opponent's weakness is to, and then would, would work on that and bring them down based on that. Yes. Muhammad Ali. Cassius Clay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what else can you say about Muhammad Ali? He's a great, he was a great boxer, a great man. Uh, he stood up for, I uh, wasn't afraid to, um, and I guess that's what made him a hero for many people and for myself as well, you know, that he didn't stay silent when it came to um, racial uh, injustice, you know, anything that uh, that has had that uh, was being done to our people. You know, he spoke about it, you know, mm -hmm. at, at, he spoke about it at a time at, at the height of his career, not when he was, you know, <laughs> Not when he was retiring. No, he spoke about it when he was a champion champion, when he had a lot to lose, right? And that's courageous. And that's a mindset on it, it as well, you know? He had a mindset that, okay, if I saw injustice, speak about it, you know? He was not, mm -hmm. only, he wasn't only courageous in the ring, he was courageous out of the ring as well because he, he was... Um, he was stopped. For, he, he was for about I think three years. He stopped. Uh, they stopped him from boxing, right? Mm, so they mm -hmm. and at a time where you know he he was significantly he, he impacted his uh, his um, his income, you know, mm -hmm. where um, you know even even though he was to, he used to speak uh, better about uh, the other boxers like Joe 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 Lewis. No, uh, Joe Frazier. I'm sorry, Joe Frazier. Um, but he was still, they were still friends, you know? They just, it's funny how these boxers are, you know? But they're friends. They know it's, mm. it's, it's entertainment, you know? But even when he was doing bad, when he was uh, suspended for those three years, Joe Frazier helped him out, you know, financially. He helped mm -hmm. him out, you know, quietly, on, you know, on a hush-hush, you know? But, um, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Jay. You, you know, you know what, you know what is I, I found fascinating. Mm -hmm. and you, you know, listeners, I, I, I must tell you, I my father was one who who was interested in boxing, and mm. you know that that's definitely not the the type of sport that people want to talk, what mm. talk to anyone when when they're watching it, they're so in, engaged and in, enthralled in it that it's not like oh, what's happening? Who's you know? You, you, this not a talking kind of thing. It's like you're in it. You're in mm -hmm. the zone of win, win, win. Come on, get him, get him, get him. Mm -hmm. And so when when I read about about one of um, Ali's tactics, because mm -hmm. again, it's mindset. Like you know, in in terms of what was one of the skills that he used against his opponent. And here's a quote that that I'm going to share with you in terms of to reveal his mindset. And mm -hmm. this is what threw people off. Because if someone punches, you don't keep your face there to accept the blow. He actually did the reverse of what people expected. So if you think of boxing like a dance, people are accustomed to a technique where you throw a punch, you pull back. Uh, Ali used to do the opposite. He used to stick his face out in their face. And they were like, wait a minute. You're supposed to pull, like, you You want me to punch you? Like, he, it would be mind games where he actually gave you his face instead of pull, drawing back. So here, here's the quote I'm going to share with you. Liston had to believe that I was crazy. This is his, one of his opponents. That I was capable of doing anything. He couldn't see nothing to me at all but my mouth that's all i wanted him to see and he's referring to sticking his face in someone else's face 
Mm-hmm. All I wanted him was to see was my mouth. Why? Mm-hmm. This is his reason why. Because his mentality was float like a butterfly, but sting like a bee. Your hands can't hit what your eyes can't see. So mm-hmm. he stuck his face into someone else's face so that they didn't see the punch coming. Mm-hmm. He f- he had them focused only on his mouth and his hand came and, and struck him. Yeah. It's like pow, pow. Mm-hmm. You look look at me, look at me, look at me. Boom. Mm-hmm. They're not looking at the hands, they were mm-hmm. looking at his face. Yeah. So that's just one example of of a technique he used yeah. to say, I'm gonna direct your eyes here while mm-hmm. I strike you there. And that's that that sting. Yeah. And so it, it's really interesting to see like one of, of his tactics, how he decides to take down his opponent. Yeah, he used to, he used to talk a lot in the ring. That that that's what that's why used to, that's why he used to annoy a lot of his opponents because he spoke <laughs> a lot. He's you know, instead of fighting, he's talking to them, you know, and then he's they call this the name they, they give him a nickname called the Louis Louisville Lip. Right? Oh my God, no! Yeah, because he he talked they, a lot. They got a t- talking in the ring. Yeah, you know, I mean, he he defeated he defeated the best. You know, people mm-hmm. that fighters that um, many thought that he wouldn't he wouldn't win. You know, mm-hmm. and and this yeah. guy is what some tough guys, tough guys. Mm-hmm. George Foreman is mm-hmm. a George George Foreman fought all the way to was in his forties. Right, so this mm-hmm. is this this is a guy who had a very very powerful punch, but again, it's a mindset. He had a tactic. He had he had, he knew that if he went direct, you know, force by force, like punch by punch, that he would have lost. So he had to be, mm-hmm. you know, he skillfully maneuvered. You know, you know you've, you know, you got to use your mind. You got to use your mind. Mm-hmm. You know? He and had he, to have strategy. Mm-hmm. That's what he used. Yeah. Because if he should, if he just fought the traditional way, then then his opponent would have an expectation. If I do this, you're going to do that, and it, and basically the moves are predictable. Mm-hmm. And and because he didn't fight traditionally, mm-hmm. he basically re he rewrote the the so called boxing playbook of how to fight because he started using psychological. Mm-hmm. fighting psychological warfare instead of relying on physical strength and and physical technique yeah because the technique would be a routine this is how we're supposed to do it this is how you're supposed to block you know this is how we're supposed to duck but he he hit them in ways they didn't know what what was going to happen from minute to minute and that that scared them because they were like what is he going to do now and he was unpredictable and that was to his advantage. Yeah. Now again, like I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna re reemphasize this point. Every, every champion, basically Muhammad Ali, every champion that he lost to, he came back and defeated and defeated them. Usually, it's when you lose to someone, it's kind of hard to go back and win because they've, you know, they got you, they figured you out. You know, so, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but again, Muhammad Ali, his not only what made him exceptional is because he was able to go back and defeat every opponent that he fought mm-hmm. and, and, and every champion, I would say every champion, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And to earn back his title. So that, mm-hmm. that made him exceptional. Most fighters, did, mm-hmm. most champions didn't do that. Once, mm-hmm. they, once they start losing, it's all down the hill. You know, mm-hmm. um, so he 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 was basically motivated to seek uh, redemption. Then that's right, that's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is right. Yep. So yeah, so so he set his own personal goal to win, mm-hmm. and that that is awesome. Yeah, that really is awesome. Yeah, never accepting defeat. You know, and mm-hmm. even if you do, and you know what, and that's a very good point too. It's like. A, you know, mm-hmm. the, the process of winning also involves losing because, mm-hmm. you know, some people 
you know, who are critical of others. I'm, I'm just going to just say it. You mm-hmm. know, sometimes people look at people who've experienced a, a set of, sale, uh, of failures to be a failure. Just mm-hmm. because you've experienced hardships doesn't mean you're a failure. If you have a goal, and, and I'm going to use the Wright brothers as an example, mm-hmm. you know, people who are inventors, they have an idea, it starts in the mind, they sketch it on paper. They create, they're basically creating something that has never existed before. You know, the airplane that we fly today, it, it started off as a concept that seemed ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But yet when, when people look at a bird and see how they're able to soar, there's this desire of, I mean, what, what would man want to do in the sky? It's like you were born with feet, not with wings, except your fate. You are you know, bipedal, you, 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 you walk, that's you, that's you, but they had the, yeah, you, you, they had a desire to fly. But Mm -hmm. what was the, what was the idea? It was about getting to a place faster because relying on the horse, you know, like the, the world is big, you know, they, they invented the, the, the cars and the automobiles came from, from inventions. But, but the point I'm trying to make is, is that the Wright brothers, when they designed the earliest forms of of the flight machines, there was a lot of crashes. There was a lot of money invested. And, you know, failure is a part of the process. And when they finally were able to, to create a flying machine that was able to lift off for more than two minutes, <laughs> because if you've ever watched the videos, you see that, it was less than five minutes. There was a crash. There mm-hmm. was some success. And then once they've achieved the success, they were able to tweak their inventions until they can perfect it enough for it to actually be able to carry a, one person, two people, and eventually more. And so if you are a person who's experienced succession of defeat, so to speak, Mm -hmm. a succession of failures. If you quit, then you've allowed yourself to accept that, oh, you know, things are never going to change. Things are never going to improve. If that's where you want your story to end, that's where you've closed your book. Mm -hmm. But using Muhammad Ali's life as an example, yeah, he had some defeats and it's a public one. I mean, mm-hmm. who wants to get beaten physically <laughs> on national TV? That's right. And then everybody <laughs> talks about it that night and the next few days in mm-hmm. the newspaper. That's right. Oh, he fell. Oh, here's a snapshot of, of when they had the, the, the knockout. Mm-hmm. Like, that's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. You know, if someone glorifies your, your, your defeat. But having an individual goal to overcome the defeat, if if you want to call it that, mm-hmm. the setback or or that that um, moment of 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 uh, lack of success. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say failure because you know as long as you you're you're willing to get up well, and overcome, then then you you won't deem it as such. Well, Jade, I've I've got to say this. I I have my life has been. Uh, a difficult life for, for, for many years, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I've had many challenges in life, but I think through failure, I've learned many things. I've, I've gained uh, knowledge, I've gained wisdom through failure. Right now, failure, I would, I would define failure is when you give up. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. if you don't give up, if you continue whatever it is in life, if you continue pursuing the goal to achieve, then you haven't failed. You've only failed if you've given up. And I've seen people who've given up to a point where they committed suicide, Mm -hmm. right? That's, that is failure. You know, that is failure. And, and sometimes it can be, not their own, not of their own doing. It could be that again, like we said, 
It's a spirit. Okay? It's a dog spirit that comes over you. If you are in an inductor, if you, if you, if, if, you know, if, yeah, we say your environment, but, you know, it's a spirit. It's just a spirit. That's a whole different topic. I don't want to get into it, but it's a spirit that causes people to, uh, the spirit of depression, it's something that uh, um, comes upon you if you're living a life, if you are allowing it, if you're allowing your mind, right? To wonder. To be influenced. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, so it comes, mm -hmm. you know, it mm -hmm. comes. Um, but go ahead, Jed, I, uh, then I'm going to share a scripture. I think uh, we are at the hour and uh, 40 minutes, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, so um, just, to, just, I personally don't have any more points. I mean, I, of course, we have lots of, of examples and personal stories of, of how we've overcame things. Mm -hmm. But I think definitely having the will, the desire to not give up is is where the victory lies. Because, yes, there's trauma, there's pain, there's setbacks, there's frustration, a whole lot of emotions that come with the, why can't I get this straight? I'm, I'm like 40 years old, and by now I should... Then you have other people in your ear saying you should have gotten this or have obtained this by now and you should know better. But uh, if you have uh, an understanding where you can somehow learn from your situation, then you're not thinking this is happening to me. But you can learn to work with it or through it because yeah. you have to be able to identify it. You can't just say your life sucks. Mm -hmm. We can't just say, I have bad luck. It's like, there's little decisions that you can make that make, can make a difference so that you can break that cycle that that seems to be a conundrum. You know, because mm -hmm. there's habits that come into play. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, if someone wants to help you and you're like, I don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But someone is trying to encourage you mm -hmm. or give you insight and you immediately shut down then the the breakthrough doesn't happen because you're not allowing yourself to 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 win to, <laughs> to yeah win. To, to win, win. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. to learn to mm -hmm. to be open to understand you're not humble mm -hmm. you know to to put it mildly mm -hmm. you know not to say that not to say you can listen to anybody's advice mm -hmm. but getting sound advice from someone who's been there done that someone who who has a good uh, um, moral compass, you know, because you know, you know, they, they, you, there are such things as crabs in a barrel, and people who um, surround themselves with people who complain. They, they never rise above their their issues. They just talk about their problems. But it takes a brave soul to say, "I don't like where I'm, where things are heading. I'm going to make some different choices." I am going to move in a direction, even if it feels uncomfortable. I'm mm -hmm. going to make strides towards it. And that's where you start moving the needle in the direction of progress. You know, and even if you have setbacks, you know, what, what, what some might say is as failures, as long as you don't give up, then you are making progress. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a small change or a major change, you're 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 going to develop those muscles, whether it's spiritual um, strengths or mental victories, emotional victories, and hopefully, God willing, financial victories. Because if you're in a situation where you've lost jobs, then you know there's some work to be done. You know, but it is possible if you don't give up. And and successful people. Remember, you know, how successful people surround themselves with other su successful people. Sometimes it is about the environment where you just need to change your environment. How mm -hmm. you think, but also to who you surround yourself uh, with to get advice so that you can rise above your situation. Like, mm -hmm. like these boxers, there's a reason why they have a coach. Mm -hmm. Right there on the ring, there's so... How many? 16 rounds? 
Well, now now it's twelve. It used to be sixteen. Jeez, I yeah. mean to pick up and not give up. I mean, I can't imagine getting physically yeah. punched in my face and saying, "Get up and go out there again." Mm-hmm. But then you know they they're conditioned to fight. Yeah. And that that's why we're talking about Muhammad Ali is 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 conditioning yourself to never give up, mm-hmm. despite whatever your weaknesses are. You yeah. know, he he knew his weaknesses, and that's why he chose to take his opponents down psychologically. Mm-hmm. Because he knew his his punches weren't as as strong and as imp- impactful as some of his opponents. Yeah, I mean, but, but don't get it wrong, Jade. Um, he knocked out. He had he had uh, what sixty one fights, right? He had sixty one fights in his career. And he knocked out um, 37 people. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's not it's not it's not to say he didn't he didn't have a he just wasn't um, quote unquote uh, knockout uh, artist like they would say like a mm-hmm. you know like a Mike Tyson Mike Tyson you know knock you out you yeah know, you make the wrong yeah. move, you make the wrong move you're gonna be sleeping <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah you know what I mean like. <laughs> You make the wrong move, like a power puncher is like, like um, he, he, the fighters like he fought. Uh, Joe Frazier was a power puncher. Um, mm-hmm. um, uh, Sonny Liston was a power puncher. Joe Frazier was a power puncher. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Uh, Ken Norton was a power puncher. So he fought some powerful, powerful people, and he was able to maneuver. You know. Yeah, mm, he talk. Mm. You know, yeah, he talked to them. He, you know, talked to them. He seduced them. It's like it's like it's like uh, um, a, a, a snake, a snake, uh, a snake. What do you call him? A snake um, a charmer. A snake, a snake charmer. charmer. Yeah. He put oh them, my god. He put them to sleep. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> he's like, look at me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I mean? then of course he was a talker. Yeah, he, he'll talk you, talk you to a knockout. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, mm, mm, mm. that's annoying. You're fighting somebody who's talking to you. Come on, I'm trying to knock you out. You, <laughs> you're talking to me. You know, so you can yeah. imagine that. Um, but um, but on a serious note, I want to give you guys an illustration, right? And um, yeah, uh, 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 th- think think of it this way. You know how um, bats. Uh, fly, roam through dark, through darkness. Yes, yes. Right, descend, mm-hmm. descend. Uh, what the, what the, the sonic blast? Right, the, the yeah, the sonic signals. Yeah, the sound, a mm-hmm. sound that hits off. It has to hit off a wall, right? Mm-hmm. Hit off an object. It hits off an object, mm-hmm. and they, and they'll just fly through because bats don't have vision. Okay, they don't have vision. They have, they use the ears to see. Mm-hmm. All right. So the question is, what are you putting out in order for you to get in return? Right? Because when you feel contained is because you, you, you feel contained and you're not able to move forward. And when you're not able to move forward, you will be depressed. Mm-hmm. You will be depressed, you know, and... You have to, you have to, what, 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 what frequency are you putting out? What energy are you putting out? Cause mm. whatever you put out has to come back. That's just energy, mm. mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. You know, so that's what you have to consider. If you are in this, and- if you are in these quote unquote, uh, depressed, depressive states, you have to, ev- it, it, it requires, um, evaluation of self. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, go ahead. Yeah. Jay. Yeah, and 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 just like the bat, I mean, in in the bat's case, he has poor vision, but mm-hmm. it doesn't stop him from finding his insects. Mm-hmm. It, he it, it's it's it acts. It 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 it, it it's, it's 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 incredible. How can you fly blind? Mm-hmm. But it uses its skill to overcome and over or over compensate its weakness. Mm-hmm. And so in your life, you may know what you want in your mind, but you see with your own eyes that you feel like you're not anywhere close to the goal. Mm-hmm. But stay driven to fly 
and rely on other senses. And what other senses do we have? We have, you know, you can do research. Mm -hmm. You can get advice, learn from experts. You can learn to, to walk differently. You know, when I say walk, meaning, okay, you've, you've tried things a certain way. You know how they say, you know, uh, the, the definition of insanity is when you do the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Mm -hmm. So if you you're experience a situation where you're in a conundrum where there is no growth, then it's like, okay, uh, we've you've exhausted yourself and you really haven't had a breakthrough. But it doesn't mean it's impossible. You just need to be willing to try new things. So the bat relies on its other senses to to make progress where if he just relied on his eyes, then where would he go? Mm -hmm. I mean, outside of the comfort of, of the clusters warm on a branch, they were like, well, do we go to the left or right? I don't know. And crash into the next tree. No, Mm -hmm. it, it learned to use the sound to Mm -hmm. see. And so you, as long as you're willing, this is you going on faith, You're willing to say, you know what? I don't see how close I am to where my goal is, but I know if I keep moving Mm -hmm. and if I use, use, use what, what's at your discretion in terms of like resources, Mm -hmm. you can get closer and closer to the goal. You don't have to be like, well, this is all I know and this is all I can do. And this is all I'm going to be because this is all I know. And this is all I can do. And, And there's no growth. It was like you, you, you may have wanted to aspire to do something in your life, but you've settled doing something else and then you're unhappy. But then how do you ever achieve those, those, those goals if you don't take risks? You have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone and, and work towards that goal so that you can see some results. And, and, um, and then with strategy, of course. Because mm-hmm. Muhammad Ali used strategy to attain those goals. It's not like it, it's it's not just just physical strength. He said, "I know how to distract my opponent. I know how to get them to focus here while my hand is approaching them there." <laughs> you know, and and that's that that is strategy. Mm-hmm. You have to strategize and 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 know that you can. Um, be victorious and just try different approaches. Yeah. Yes. Um, I have, I have this cute little, uh, this little, uh, quote that I want to share that, that, that has a, a cute little, uh, visual mm. in your mind. Mm. Okay. As an artist, I went to art school and, and I loved learning how to draw anatomy and learning how to draw, um, the things that I, I see. I love realism mm. and, um, there's this artist, his name is Paul Klee, mm-hmm. K-L-E-E, and he said this once. He said, a dot is a line that went for a walk. A dot is a line that went for a walk. Mm-hmm. If you are stuck, that's like you standing in place. You must keep moving. So your story is still being written. Mm-hmm. So where you want to go is part of your mindset. Where do you want to go? Mm-hmm. Don't stay stagnant. Have a plan. Get advice. Seek advice. You know, have a, a mindset of, of being in the present, not staying in the past, pushing past the past, making progress. And you will see results. You want to move forward and not remain stagnant so that you can see growth, so that you can see a positive outcome. And uh, I just wanted to personally thank you so much for joining us today in our Narrowcast, Mm -hmm. listening to some of our our, um, little notes of inspiration. Mm -hmm. And just know that in our present time in our life, even the children themselves we are all stressed out. What is happening in the world, all over the world, mm-hmm. is is stressful. Mm-hmm. You know, the pandemic has has really altered the way people um, have money and how they use their money, or the lack of money, and mm-hmm. how we are 
schooling the kids or perhaps even the interruptions if you physically have um, experienced health issues. Mm-hmm. We all are have been affected by the things that are going on in the world and economically many of us are 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 in stressful situations mm-hmm. but we want to encourage you to know that um how we we conduct ourselves starting in the mind is the healthiest choice that we can make and know that we're in this together but we can and will overcome our circumstances starting with how we perceive our challenges so thank mm-hmm. you so much for joining us in today's narrowcast and um if uh, so, Rebecca, you have anything to say? We'd like to to close. Yeah, I wanna I wanna um, close by uh, edifying what you the the quote that you just actually read. Um, uh, Second Corinthians. Since you started with Corinthians, I'm gonna close with Corinthians. Okay. Yes. Sec- Second Corinthians chapter ten verses five says, "We demolish arguments and every pretension." that sets itself up against the knowledge of Baba Mungu. Mm-hmm. And, we, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Kuswa, Kuswa Congo. All right? 2 Corinthians 10.5. So your mind is a very, 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 very powerful tool. The enemy is seeking to take captive of your mind all right everything the enemy is able to recreate the heart is able to recreate the bones your organs but what the enemy is unable to do right now as we speak is to take over your mind and that mind we cannot allow the mind to be to be taken over by the enemy all right family so I, I wish you well. I wish your family well. May Baba Mungu bless you. May you find peace in all that you do. May the love of our Father be in your heart. Be kind to your neighbor. Be kind to your children. Be kind to your wife. Be kind to your husband. Be kind to those who seek to disrupt your life. Okay? Because when you are at peace... No evil, no evil can subdue us. All right, family. May Baba Mungu bless you. And I say peace, peace, peace. Salama to you. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.